So I need to introduce that vocabulary of intellectual control here. The idea with intellectual control, as Dijkster was talking about it, is before you run the code, do you have good confidence it's going to do what you expect? Now, Dijkster was a mathematician by training, and so he held the standard to say, we should be proving our code to be correct. Very few of us do that today, although if you are in your IDE and it says this variable might be null and it looks like you're dereferencing it, believe it or not, that's actually the same proof infrastructure that's demonstrating that that's going on. But he introduced this idea of structured programming, probably most famous for the fact that you no longer have go-to statements in your code. But the idea was far bigger than this. It was that we can structure our code in such a way that makes it easy or harder to reason through it and have confidence in what it does. So really beyond the proofs, there's all kinds of things that we do today or don't do today that can give us more or less confidence. I would include things like having a really strong type system instead of being stringly typed, if you're familiar with that. Uh, structuring your code so it has consistency, using abstract data types, uh, designed by contract, and so forth. So let me contrast intellectual control with statistical control. Now, with statistical control, you run the code once or many times, and because you run it in representative cases, you give yourself confidence. Yeah, I ran it. It does what I expect it to do, okay? So, uh, with these two things, I think you can see these are two different ways of getting to the same answer, which is, you know, I, I'm building code that does what I expect. And because uh, you guys have been kind enough to all come here, I feel like I should say something a bit radical and a bit edgy that disturbs you. So, so here it is. I worry that our reliance on testing has numbed us to the fact that we're doing less reasoning than we used to.